Okay guys, so we've been talking about matter and as you know, um, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space and today we want to examine some of the properties of matter and try to determine what, how matter behaves under certain conditions. Hi class, um, I have two Aaron Myers flasks and I have two uh, chemicals in here. One I have is calcium nitrate of a certain volume and one is sodium carbonate of a certain volume. Now I'm going to mass each one of this and see what their masses are. <clears throat> so first when you mass anything make sure the top of this is very dry and also make sure that the bottom of your flask or whatever you're trying to mass is dry Put it over here and then wait for some time. So this weighs so this is my uh, flask with calcium nitrate and it's weighing 49.78 grams with the flask. So mass of the flask plus calcium nitrate is 49.78 grams. <clears throat> so I'm going to weigh the next flask which has sodium carbonate solution. Do the same thing. Make sure the bottom is dry. And this weighs mass of the flask and sodium carbonate. It is 47.28 grams. So be very careful and start pouring one in the other. Just swirl a little bit and we got something totally cloudy white in color. Okay? And what I'm going to do now is mass this flask with this solution and see if it weighs the same. So we are going to precipitate lab, we started with um, two different chemicals over here. So we had uh, two liquids over here. And then afterwards, we mixed them together and we had a, uh, had a liquid and then we had some kind of solid white stuff in the water, whatever it might be. Okay. So over here, we had uh, two uh, containers that contained our liquids and then afterwards we combine the two containers together um, into one of the two containers okay so we had a liquid in here it was clear we had a liquid in here that was clear and then we put them together and we ended up with a liquid in some sort of uh, cloudy uh, white stuff of some sort. And so we got to try to represent this on the particle level, and it's a little bit trickier here because we appeared to have some sort of chemical change. We definitely had a chemical reaction that happened because we have something new that was made. There was nothing white beforehand, 
and then there's something white afterwards. So we definitely have some sort of chemical reaction that happened. Okay, so we need to represent our particles beforehand and then our particles afterwards. And uh, there's kind of two things in the beakers beforehand and two things in the beakers afterwards. So one of those things is we definitely had just some liquid uh, water because they were dissolved in water. So we'll show uh, a few particles of water here. We'll represent those with the black dots. And we'll have uh, three waters in here and three waters over here. And uh, so let's make this a little key because we're starting to get a little bit confusing here. So that is going to be H... Two, oh, okay. And now we're going to change our color. We're going to have our two different chemicals. Um, so over here, we're going to have uh, chemical A. We're going to represent it with some blue compounds here. And then over here, we're going to have chemical B. We'll represent with some red dots here. Okay. So we mix these two things together. We pour them together into one. Um, our water is still going to be water, okay? We didn't change our water at all. So we still are going to have six dots of water now, right? Because we combined the two together. But something new was created. So somehow our, uh, our red and our blue chemical um, must have combined together in some way. But the mass did not change. The mass stayed the same from before and after. We weighed everything beforehand, massed everything beforehand, mass everything after. We know that the mass didn't change, so therefore the number of particles must not have changed either. So we still must have three blue ones and three red particles, but they somehow must have combined together in, uh, in a new way. So what we're going to do to represent that is we'll show some of the blue particles over here, and we're still going to have three blue particles, and they're going to be combined to... Uh, our red particles here. So let's put the red particles right next to the blue particles to show that they've combined together in some way to make something new. Okay, so we started with uh, a mass over here. The mass did not change over here. So even though we underwent a chemical reaction, something new was created. Uh, we had red and blue, and now we have red blues. Um, the mass did not change. So we had our two liquids. We mixed them together. It made a liquid and a solid. Uh, the mass did not change, um, and, and the amount of stuff did not change, but we did definitely make something new.